I'm Joe Beavers, and I'm sat here with fellow Grosvenor professional Jeff Kimber. Uh, we're going to talk to you about some of our favourite poker tells and different ways that you can uh, spot what your opponents are doing at the table. So, uh, Jeff. Pre-flop is one of the, uh, the big things that I look for. Um, I often see players who will sit down, you can even tell things about how experienced they are just by how they stack the chips, how they look at the cards, but before the action gets to them, a lot of players will have a quick glance at their cards, and if they don't like them, even though the action's down there somewhere, they'll be sat back, waiting to fold their cards, so in your position you would now know you can easily raise, knowing that I'm going to fold my cards, or on the flip side of things, I might look at my cards and all of a sudden sit forward, be interested, want to know what's going on, ready to, ready to make a bet, ready to have my chips. And of course, that would mean that you would then be looking to fold your hand because you know I've got a strong hand behind you. There's a, there's a lot of well-known players that I know that won't actually look at their uh, two, uh, uh, two hole cards until the action gets to them for exactly the reason that Jeff's talking about. If you haven't looked at your hand, then you can't give off those kind of tells. Uh, one of my favourite uh, uh, tells that works better pre-flop than, than, um, than, than post-flop is if there's a lot of action uh, pre-flop and your opponent moves all in and you're sat there th thinking, does he have aces, does he have kings, is he making a move on me? And he's just sitting there completely motionless and you, you really want to get a tell on him. One of my favourite tricks is, is just to, to, to look at him until he looks at you and then smile at him because a genuine smile is one of the hardest things to fake. And if he smiles back at you with a genuine smile, he can only do that if he's got aces or kings. So if you ever get that genuine smile, providing that he hasn't watched this video, um, that's, a, that's a pretty reliable tell. Uh, once we've uh, gone pre-flop, we then uh, we go to a flop. Quite often there's a tell, don't you think, Joe, with uh, when a flop's dealt? The three cards come down and um, some players will have a little look at the flop and then look straight away from it and I always find that's a, a, a strength tell. I think players have a little glance, see something they like, look away, start looking at the chips ready to have a bet and you'll find the players who've missed that flop who are weak. They almost stare wistfully at the flop dreaming about what might have been or wish that ace was a queen or that kind of thing. Um, I think that's a, a tell that very often players will glance at a flop and glance away. Absolutely, absolutely. With them. Um like eyes can be a big giveaway. Um, as well as looking at the flop and glancing away when you like it, one of the things that players often, often do subconsciously is if they're gonna make a bet, so they've seen the flop, they like the flop, and they just very quickly look at their chips and then look away from their chips. They're subconsciously wanting to make a bet, so that's why they're looking at their chips. And the other thing is, if, like Jeff says, if someone continues to stare at the table, they continue to stare at the flop, Players generally act the opposite of what you would expect. They're, 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 they're actors. So if someone's flopped a set, the last thing they're going to do is continue to stare at the four on the flop if they've got two fours. If they've got three fours, they're going to try to look away from the flop um, to suggest to you that they haven't hit it. And if they're continuing to stare at it, that means that they haven't. So, so yes, yeah, yeah I like those ones. It's very easy to... Uh to spot people who are being defensive, isn't it? People who are trying to stop you betting, they're, they're trying to act like they've got something, it, the action's on you, but they're grabbing chips, they're trying to look as if they're threatening, trying to get a free card, trying to trying to let the action get back to them without it costing them a lot to, to call or to, to see a bet in front of them. So people who are grabbing their chips defensively and you know, who are thre almost threatening to put chips in the pot, it's very rare that they're actually going to make a big raise or they're going to make the bet themselves if the action's checked to them. That's, that's true, that's a very good opportunity. If you see someone and the, 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 the card comes down, the flop comes down, and they start stacking chips like this. And they do this, and then they stack again, and then they put them up like this, and then they check. Just make a big bet, because you're, you're gonna pick it up. Like if, if, someone, if someone has a good hand, they're not gonna do this act. They're not gonna make out that they're gonna bet and then not check. It's, it's the old strong is weak, and weak is strong. So, um, so yeah, that's a good one too. Quite often getting, getting the other player to speak is important, isn't it? It's what we try and do. We try and get somebody to give something away about the strength of their hand. Um, when they haven't got a very strong hand or when they're bluffing, it's very hard to act natural. It's very hard to use normal flow of sentence, to 
to act normally. It's like if you're lying to your wife, you know, you have to think twice, I make sure you're, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, you're covering your tracks, you're thinking about, w w hang on, I need to make this make sense. Whereas if you're natural and the guy's saying, you know, have you got a straight and you do have a straight, it's kind of a lot more natural to, to answer honestly than it is to act, to act dishonestly. Uh, one of the other things is like, naturally, if someone is going to lie, if you ask someone a direct question, you know, did you go to the pub last night? If they're going to lie, they generally pause before they answer. And it's the same in poker. If someone's going to bluff, they pause before they do anything. They make a pause before. I'm not talking about a long, deliberate pause. I'm talking about a short, natural pause. And that short, natural pause before a bet, very often on the river, means that the person's bluffing as well. That's interesting though, isn't it? Because if the pause goes any longer than the short, natural pause, then it's very, very rarely a bluff because people almost lose the bottle to, to make that bluff. So if, if they have the short pause and bets, you think, right, they've, they, this could well be a bluff. But if there's a long pause, they start thinking about what they're gonna do, they start, then they bet. That's a lot rarer to be a bluff there because the timing means that they've had a, a time to think about it and they've settled on what they're gonna do. Timing is one of the most important ways to read your opponent. If, if, someone, if, uh, if, the, if, if someone checks and then you bet, and when they bet, they call instantly like this, they call straight away. This is almost certainly a drawing hand because it's, it's one of those timing tales. If, if someone is thinking about your bet and they're deliberating whether they should call or whether they should raise, then they've very likely got something to think about. They're not gonna sit there thinking with nothing to think about. So they're thinking about, I've got top pair, is my kicker good? I've got two pairs, should I raise? I've got a set, should I slow play? Whereas if they're on a draw, they haven't got a hand yet. It's quite simple, they wanna stay in the pot, but they don't really wanna make a bet. So if someone, if you bet and someone calls very quickly, then that's a good tell that they're drawing. If the same thing happens again on the turn, then it's almost certain that you're correct. And in a spot like this, it can enable you to pick up a bluff on the river. Because if someone has called very quickly on the flop, called very quickly on the turn, and there's a flush draw on the flop that's missed, or there's a, there's a, there's a big draw that's missed, now, with your top pair, you shouldn't really be betting, you should be checking against your opponent because if they're on a draw, they're not going to call you, but they might bluff. And you've got the tell that, that's telling you that they're very likely on a draw, so any kind of pair hand should be checking the river and picking off those bluffs. I think like, like most things in poker, it's important that you can correlate whether the individual person, whether the pause means strength or whether the pause means weakness. So it's much better to add a tell to go with all the other things you've noticed in the hand, where it, whether it's how, how often the guy has put chips in the pot, how, how much he's bet, that kind of thing. Tells are only part of the story, but they're, they're a great way to pick up an extra little bit of information that might make a difference between whether you call or whether you fold. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing is, tells aren't 100% accurate. Um, very often you have to verify a tell. And by verify a tell, as a, you might think that someone's doing something, but until you've seen their hand and you know that they check quick, uh, they, um, they call very quickly if they're on a draw or something like that. You, once you've seen it verified, it's, uh, it's, it's a much more valuable tell. So if you're, if you're playing in a game and you're not in a pot, you should still be paying attention. You should be watching all your opponents. You should be watching out for these things happening. Because then if you're in a pot and you verified that tell previously and you've seen that it works, it's much more likely to be reliable. The, 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 these kind of things, they're, they're, they're an acquired skill. They're something that you can learn and that there's really no substitute for experience. So every time you play, watch all of your opponents. Every time they're in a pot, watch the action behind you before it gets to you, watch the action after you, even if you've passed, because you can pick lots of things up. It's really important, isn't it? Put the iPad down, stop playing Candy Crush, concentrate on what's going on, even if you're not in the hand. You know what, that's one thing I never understood. There was a, uh, quite a well-known German pro that was, that was staked, and I saw him playing at the World Series. And we were playing in a 10,000 uh, 10, Poly Omaha tournament. And the guy is sat there and he's got his shades on and he's got his headphones on and he's got his iPad on and he's got a newspaper next to him. And I was thinking, if I were staking that guy, there's no way in the world, if I saw him with all those distractions, that I would be interested in staking him again. Yeah. When you're at the poker table, you don't need distractions. There, there's enough things going on to keep, your, to keep your mind occupied and you should be watching things, you know, rather than being distracted. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed our 
uh, introduction to tails. There's a, there's a lot of material there, and you can use these tails whether you're a beginner um, or whether you, whatever kind of tournaments you're playing at Grosvenor, whether you're playing the bigger GUKPTs or whether you're playing the smaller events. But uh, if you're in a pot with me, please don't watch this video.